Hey guys, it's Diane again. Today we're going to talk about oxygen and some things that, um, just some important little tidbits. So, of course, I'm here with a concentrator and I'm here with an E tank. And um, everybody's seen this or it's some kind of a uh, similar situation uh, with their oxygen concentrators. You see, you have your bubble, your humidifier bottle. I thought I'd talk about some things that I see frequently that people um, maybe are doing wrong and maybe just might help you with some tips here. First thing I see is that is making the alarm go off or making things not work is this right here is not threaded correctly. If this is not threaded correctly on some of the newer concentrators, you'll get an alarm or it won't work. It really won't work. So make sure this is threaded correctly. And it's hard to tell for sure. Sometimes you just have to take it off and redo it to make sure that this is threaded correctly. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the humidifier bottle. Is it bubbling? Look at it and see. And it, make sure that it's not too full. If it's too full, it's not going to work correctly either. You're not to fill them all the way up. There's a line, a fill line on them. And it's always best if you can get distilled water in them instead of um, regular tap water, which will leave deposits, especially in this area of the country. Now, lots of times you'll have your residents say that I'm not getting any air, I'm not getting any air. And you know, one thing of course to do, we're always thinking, well, of course they don't feel that way because they have COPD or something like that. But perhaps you better check first. Tubing! Don't you hate it? I hate it! What are you going to do without it though? It can get wadded up in a ball, it gets kinks in it. I got a kink right here. Look at that kink right there. Yep. Now that's no good right there. That, sometimes you just have to work it and pinch it back out to get the air flowing through there. Sometimes you're just going to have to get a new, um, a new set of tubing. Because once that area is kinked really well, sometimes it'll, it'll just kink again on you. You gotta look. Look at that. Maybe they really aren't getting the oxygen. And then another thing you can do is the bubble test. Get a clear cup of water. And you know, it's hard hearing it from someone. Gladys, it's working. You just have COPD. Well, it's not doing anything for her. And you know, she hears what you're saying, but it sure don't feel like it. But if you show her, use another sense, we have all of our senses, drop that cannula into the water, and then look. Are there bubbles coming up? Okay, and then show it to them. Don't say anything, just show it to them. They can see the bubbles coming out. Usually they'll look at it and say, I see them. Sure don't feel like it though. And I'm sure it doesn't. Now, a few other things about the, the cannulas and oxygen tubing. Do you know how to put a cannula in? You put the prongs down, right? You put the prongs like this, not like that. You put them like this. And then of course these go around the ears. What else goes around the ears? Their hearing aid, their glasses, and the tubing? Behind the ears is a very common place, and if they're diabetic, for breakdown. Boy, if they have all those things going on behind that ear, I'd be looking for pressure sores or fungal infections. Another thing, they make these bright green hoses. I kind of like them. Look how bright that is. How many people trip on these? They're hard to see. Look at these. I even heard of a company that is now making glow in the dark ones. How cool is that? Although it probably keeps me up at night. But there are other things out there. I was at a lady's house a few years ago. I, I'm telling you right now, I don't know how she did it but she had her oxygen tubing that went from one end of her house all the way back through. I was trying to find the other end and just, I mean, she had this huge wad of the tubing. 
lots and lots of risk for for um, trips, for kinks, for getting it shut in doors. On and on it goes. You know, it might be something you have to work out with your clients um, on on getting maybe a smaller, shorter um, O2 hose. Um, <clears throat> Another thing I wanted to talk about on the e-tanks, I'm sure a lot of you use e-tanks when you're going places with your residents. They're very heavy, as you know. I like those really new little cool ones they've got, and you can refill them. But, you know, Medicaid, Medicare won't pay for all those all the time, and not everybody has them. Know your flow rate and make sure that if it doesn't have enough oxygen, test it. Turn it on and test it to see how much pressure is in here before you head out. Don't head out on a big trip with only, you know, a quarter of the oxygen left and a four liter flow rate. You'll never make it. These are missiles. Don't be just throwing a few in the trunk and letting them roll around in the back. They need to be secure. They're very dangerous if you don't take care of them correctly. Think of oxygen as a drug. You can't change the flow rate. It's very dangerous. Did you know that? If you have a, if, if someone has COPD, CHF, emphysema, all that stuff, they may be breathing off their carbon dioxide rebreather rate. And if you turn that oxygen up way too high, you might actually drop eliminate their drive to breathe. It's best not to mess with that. Never, never change a flow rate from what is ordered without um, a doctor's order. Your nurse would have to clear that for you. That's not for us to do as, um, as aides. So those are a few tidbits that I had for you today. I hope that helped. See you again.